Hey everyone, how you doing today? My name is Fireborn, and thank you so much for stopping by. Today we have quite the video to look at. I'm doing a reaction video for the first time because something finally happened that made me want to react to it. Uh, there was actually a PB two days ago on June 5th, 2020 in any percent no major glitches which is the most popular speedrunning category in hollow knight uh, a guy named pest aka pestilent box 2 got the first 32 in the category 32 is something we've been chasing for for quite some time it's considered like the category killer once someone gets a 32 the run the category is dead it's not quite dead but it's kind of close this is a really impressive run i'm just going to start the video apologies there's no sound because he's playing a soundtrack in the background and i can't have that running on youtube or they're going to demonetize me so we're just going to have the hollow knight soundtrack in the background and yeah, we're going to be watching through the entirety of this run. I haven't actually seen most of it. I just popped in at the ending and I saw he was like 16 seconds ahead or something <laughs> crazy. Uh, when he was doing this run, he actually had a 3310 as his PB. And I had a 3307 and that's still my PB right now right now um and that P pb held world record for like six months with this run he got a 32.55 which beats my pb by 12 seconds which is an absolutely insane improvement so i'm just going to be going through this entire video uh, he got a 51.25 king's pass which is pretty spicy king's pass uh, i struggle to get 51s sometimes at all so a low 51 is pretty sick <clears throat> so we're gonna be watching um pest i've been watching his stream a bit lately as he was grinding for this 32 because he was grinding specifically for the 32 which is so crazy because 32 is a very very optimized time it represents like a huge breakthrough for this speed run because it's just so optimized <laughs> like there's so much that can go wrong in this category if you miss one trick you probably can't get the 32 anymore unless you just play absolutely bonkers which you know we're not even really capable of so here he gets the double spike kill it's looking pretty nice. A uh, 143 going out of that room is very fast. Uh, if I get a 143, I am starting to get nervous already, and I'm not even two minutes into the run. So this run is going quite well so far. Um, most of the eventual spirit split is like not. There's not too much happening. It's just kind of getting through each room as quickly as possible, taking your turns as quickly as possible, getting your jumps buffered and everything. Here we got a pretty fast statue pogo, so that's looking very nice. <clears throat> I know Pest has been having like really optimized VS splits lately, so... Oh, it's... That's not too bad of a pattern. You can just pogo that guy really easily. I'm interested, to, I assume because he had such an optimized time that he had good RNG on False Knight, but we'll see. So he gets that guy to attack to the left, which is a good uh, amount of Geo that you get for free. You can see all that Geo. He's just getting that for free. Very nice. Uh, not the fastest False Knight, but he does get all the Geo, so that really makes up for it really optimized uh, for a split other than that. He does the ending of that room a bit differently than me, but I don't think it really makes a difference in terms of time. Really optimized turnaround there. <laughs> that was quite nice. 
you know, you got to appreciate the little things because that's what saves you time in this split. I just go through this split on autopilot, but some people really try hard and they save a little bit of time. Oh, he missed the jump there. <laughs> that's like the hardest jump to make in the game. It's just timing the jump up to the vengeful spirit. Because everyone tries to do it early while you're still in the dialogue, but if you do it too early, you just don't jump and then you walk to the left like that. You still got a 328 despite that, which is so crazy. That's such a good time. I don't know if I've ever gotten a 328, and he got that with bad false knight RNG. Really impressive. <clears throat> it's just like he's kind of optimized a lot of his movement just really well. Something I need to do as well. As if I can save a whole second in the PS split. That is a big deal. Oh, that sucks. He did get through that Balder quickly, but getting hit with the second spit is a bit annoying. <laughs> It's like you think you've got good RNG, but then he just spits one right on top of you and you can't really do anything to avoid it. Uh, nice menu drop there, he cancelled it like as early as possible and started going right as quickly as you could. As quickly as he could. So, oh yeah, he delayed his second nail swing there so he could hit both of them at once. And that just lets him get through that room really quickly. That room has a lot of variance to it. <laughs> Again, the Baldurs are just being jerks. That doesn't actually save time to damage boost like that. And it, w it wasn't on purpose, he just had no choice. Pretty quick, pretty quick time though. Uh, he does lose a bit just because of those damage boosts, of course. So this room is pretty straightforward. He's just gonna get two more hits there. Oh, he got another hit. You don't really need to, but I can see why he'd do that. Because you can get these birds. He, oh, he's gonna try to do it. And he's gonna get full soul actually, so that's kind of nice. Okay, and he gets the fireball skip quite cleanly. He hit that guy a little bit late, so he had to delay his hits, and he didn't get much Geo as a result. But that's okay, it's not really a big deal, as long as you get- oh, he missed that guy. Again, not a big deal. It didn't slow him down, and he's gonna be able to get enough soul in this room. It's interesting that he doesn't opt to hit that first flyer. I always do that, but you do have to turn around. I think it's faster to hit that first guy than it is to hit that last guy that he did twice. Let's see if he gets the double. Oh no, the guy does not cooperate. If you actually stand a certain distance away from him, then he'll always jump backwards, but I guess he was just like a bit mispositioned, so it didn't work out. So he's gonna get... Oh, that guy fell off. <laughs> I wonder if he's planning to hit those Venge Flies. They're stacked up very nicely. But they were too far to the right, so he doesn't bother to go after them. I think that's a wise choice. This room's looking very nice so far. He's going to get into the Hornet room pretty quickly. 707, very nice time. Let's see if Hornet cooperates, because Hornet can be very annoying at times. So we'll see if he can get double hits. That's going to be the big thing. Oh, that was so close to not working out. He does get a double hit right there. He cancels her attack, he goes for another double. Um, doesn't quite work out, but... Oh, he misses a swing. Uh... Despite the little mistakes, it was still an incredibly fast fight. Well, I wouldn't say incredibly fast, but still pretty fast. I mean, this is a reaction video, so we have to like, you know, we have to get excited over everything. <laughs> Decent fight, though. 
Uh, he does lose a bit of time, of course, as a result of that. Um, a 741 is still an excellent split time going into Mantis Claw. That's a great time. So I can see why he ended up with a very nice PB from this. Really nice menu drop cancel, dashing immediately as soon as he could. He actually has a very nice gold for this split. 132.18. Oh, that was very optimal. That statue pogo. He went straight into the transition at like the earliest possible time. Nice room as well there. A lot of these rooms are straightforward and we've all figured them out and we do the same thing, roughly. I guess a little uh, ceiling boost up there. I wonder if that saves any time. It's interesting. So we are just getting to Explosion Pogo. Oh, he doesn't do the little hop there. I think that saves a little tiny bit of time. Ooh, oops. <laughs> Not a big deal though. He got he damage boosted in the right direction, so it barely loses any time. Let's see if he gets uh, Mantis Pogo. I, I mean, I know he gets Mantis Pogo, but if he gets it quickly. Yep, he gets the fast version. Nice. He does the climb there a bit differently than I do. But I'm not sure, like, I, I assume it must be really close time-wise to do the dash, like, just to the left of where he was. I'm not 100% sure. Because some of these things are kind of difficult to time, like, just whether you do a dash or a jump in one spot, it's very tough to time these things, because there's so many different things going on in a rim. Oh, he misses that little mini hop. Not a big deal. But again, Gres Mother. This is a, another straightforward split. A lot of splits like this in the early game are just very uh, figured out and optimized. And we're gonna see like what kind of mistakes he makes. But given that it's the early game, there's not gonna be too too many mistakes. It's best. He's a great player. He does get two dashes going into the stag station. I always get one dash. If you get two dashes, it just means you, you know, you got the right dash timing jumping upwards, which is a little baby time save. Oh, that that's nice. When that guy is super far left, you save a bit of time. It's just totally RNG, of course. That's how this game works. <laughs> Gres Mother, he doesn't do the pogos. Should always do those pogos after a couple hits, in my opinion. Good split though, like there was basically no mistakes. No real mistakes. Uh, good cleanup. Given the pattern that he got, he misses the wall cling storage, but not, not a huge, huge deal. It's like maybe a second time loss. And the wall cling storage after Gress Mother is impossible. I'm just putting that out there. It's actually impossible. I used to get it all the time, and since I started doing runs again in 2020, I just never ever get it. Oh, he opts to uh, just wait it out to get the extra damage tank. That's probably wise, I think. It's not something that I do, but it makes sense. Because otherwise you have to get out here and you have to wait regardless, so. So yeah, Shade Skip, I don't think we're getting a Fireball because Fireballs lose a ton of time and makes you tilted and want to reset. <laughs> so you're, you're not playing your best after a Shade Fireball. That's like, it's just a given that the run's over once that happens. 
So we are getting to the Dream Nail. This run is looking quite nice so far. Like you see, he's minus 0.6 and you're probably like, okay, what's the big deal? Uh, his early game and his PB is pretty awesome. Uh, like anytime you get an early game like this, you're quite happy with it. Obviously you can shave like five or six seconds off of this, but is it realistic to get that kind of time with any sort of consistency? Absolutely not. That's also assuming you get like perfect RNG, which <laughs> I mean, it's never happening. So we're getting into Dream Nail. Um, we'll see how he takes the platforms. You can take the platforms really quickly. You can do the quick first platform. I'm not sure if he does quick first platform. I'm kind of interested because I know he didn't do it in the past and he doesn't do it now, but he just d does the jumps and that's also pretty quick. Oh, a little mistake there. Not a big deal. Again, it's like, you know, a second maybe, half a second, something in between that. <laughs> Decent dream nail split for sure. Um, he lost a bit of time to the husk spawn pattern and a bit of time to movement and a bit of time to missing wall cling storage. So, you know, th that is a split that a lot can go wrong really, really easily. So if you lose some time, it's it's not a huge deal. You know, the most time you're going to lose in that split is like three seconds or so. Um, unless grass cleanup just goes horribly. So we're getting to the more exciting part of the run, the City of Tears split. Um, this is the part of the run where everything just goes wrong normally. Uh, this is where the run starts to get pretty difficult. And you have to make decisions based off your Geo. How many husks do you kill? Which ones do you kill? Uh, where do you get soul? He gets a wall cling storage there, which is nice. Oh, well, he can get... Oh, okay. I thought he was going to hit both of them, but he does get a nice fall there. So that saves a bit of time. Oh, he, he pogos that guy as he jumps, so... The husk gets knocked downwards, so he doesn't get hit. Oh, that guy was in an annoying spot, but he got past him very well. All the husks were to the right there, which is actually kind of nice, because you can just dash left, and you don't have to worry about jumping over their heads. Really good RNG. Those husks at the bottom floor are the most annoying part of that room, for me anyway. Uh, he's a bit low on Geo, however. Oh, he missed that. Uh, oh, I missed that too. Uh, just some small time saves. So, like, pretty much only minor mistakes so far. And minor mistakes are just kind of bound to happen. So we'll see if he gets a good gorgeous... I wasn't sure if that's a single or a double. Okay, it looks like it might have been a single. It's hard to tell without audio, which, you know, you can thank YouTube for that. <laughs> so right now he wants like, what is it, 570-ish Geo. Uh, that's what he's aiming to get, so he's going to farm these guys. Uh, good choice. That guy did not get double hit, so he goes for two more swings on him. And oh, he, he, he hits both of them. And he hits the lever at once, which is nice. It's just, uh, you really want to get full soul here, uh, before you get to Watcher Knights. So he's gonna maybe hit one of these guys. Oh, he doesn't go for a hit. That's interesting. Uh, definitely should have, I think. Because he'll have to hit this guy three times. Oh, that's a fast way to hit him. I never, I, I've never seen that. I mean... I, I really should watch more VODs of people playing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool strat, though. I like it. Uh, the ceiling cooperated, which is nice for a change. <laughs> the ceiling cooperating is a rarity in this game. 
Sometimes you fireball and the ceiling just doesn't break, which is awesome. He gets the triple hit. That's a decent first night, for sure. Gonna get three hits here, dash away. Oh, I like he snuck that little hit in before he dashed away. He's gonna wait for that guy to roll. Oh, I thought he would go for a triple on that guy. Because you can dash over his head. This is really fast, though, because they're stacked. Oh, when that guy rolls at the perfect time. That is some sick RNG. And Pest is really playing this very well. Good reaction. Oh, that was nice. Good rea- Oh, <laughs> the wall ate the fireball. No. <laughs> and he goes- Oh, 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 he could have got that triple. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That was still a really nice fight, though. Um, he could have got the triple as the freeze frames. I mean, I'm sure he knew about it, too, but... The freeze frames happened, and the, the triple was just, like, there for the taking. But, you know, you're never gonna have a perfect Watcher Knights fight. It's literally never gonna happen. Unless you're in practice, and you've been doing it for, like, eight hours straight. That's the only way to get a perfect Watcher Knights fight. But, uh, yeah, we're, he had a decent, he, was, like, he had a small mistake in the climb, I think, but, uh, I'm interested to see how Crystal Peaks goes, um, it's like a movement-based split, but there is RNG in, like, Pogax and God Cycle and other things, so I'm gonna wait and see how that goes, but, like, being 7.8 seconds ahead here, it is a decent amount of pressure going into Crystal Peaks and then Umu. Um, at at a point like this, when the, okay, his Watcher Knight split is a 1654. Anytime you get a 16 after Watcher Knights, which I've only gotten like once or twice, um, the pressure is absolutely on. I'm sure he's gotten it numerous times, but I've only got it a couple times. It's scary when you get that kind of time. <clears throat> Especially with Pogax now, you can just... All that time save can just evaporate if the miner does not cooperate and throw that uh, Pogax at you. I could have uh, pogoed that guy. That's something I incorporated. It's, there's like a 1 in 10 chance that the uh, husk there is to the left and you can just pogo him as you go through the transition because having a bit of soul here is nice uh, he needs a decent bit more geo he goes for that hit now which is cool I'm glad more people are doing that now because it is free oh he misses the ceiling boost not a big deal going to Lem and this is all just Movement and menuing is the split going into Crystal Peaks. But at this point, like, it's good that after Watcher Nights, if you have a really good time, you have this bit of downtime to just chill out and relax and get your bearings before you go into Crystal Peaks, which is, you know, each room has its own cycle. If you mess up, you're in a lot of trouble. So. You need to calm down and just get your thoughts straight and everything. So he's gonna fireball here just to kill these guys. Um, and he needs a bit more geo, so I'm interested to see where he plans on getting it. It might just be these husks at the end of this room, or it might. He's not gonna kill the Glimback. <laughs> That's. Oh, he doesn't even kill them. Does he go for this jump? Yes, he does. Oh, he misses. <laughs> that's that's not a, not a big time loss. But um, the thing is, like, if you get the jump, it only saves point two. If you m go for the jump and miss it, you lose a ton of time. <laughs> not a not a ton of time. It's like probably still less than a second, but. I still love going for the jump because it feels so good to get that jump. It just feels so good. <laughs> I 
And here we go for the bench before getting Luma Fly Lantern. <clears throat> and only 0.1 second of time loss. Um, again, his Geo is like slightly low, but he, he might have a strat to get some more. I'm not, not quite sure. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he does have enough Geo. I've got an old man memory. <laughs> So we're getting into Crystal Peaks, and we are very far ahead. Our time is sick. Oh, this jerk hits us. Not what you want when you're this far ahead is to get hit by one of those bench flies. Oh, he, oh, he gets wall cling storage, but he wall jumps before he hits the ground. So that sends him backwards slightly. Uh, not a big deal, but I'm sure he wasn't happy about it. And nice movement in that room. We actually have Crystal Peaks playing on the OST. Very suitable. And we get Ponga Axe. Heck yeah, gamers. He does Ponga Axe a bit differently than everyone else, which is interesting. I'm, I'm sure he has his reasons. Oh, and we get a pretty fast room here. He does not get God Cycle, but um, he doesn't have to wait for the lasers. Little tiny mistakes at the end of the room, but it's just very small time loss. Again, it's like <laughs> everything in this run that loses time is super small, like less than 0.5. There's no major mistakes, and his boss fights have been pretty damn solid. And we're going into the lasers room with two health, which is all that you really need. Uh, if you have two health going in here and you're, you know, a top runner, you're totally comfortable. Uh, nothing really of note. He does wait a safe amount of time because I'm sure he does not want to die. Like you can take that like slightly faster, but is it really worth risking the run when you're eight seconds ahead? I don't think so. Play it safe and, oh, in his PB, he missed Fog Axe because I, I assume the miner was a jerk. So we are 15 and a half seconds ahead. <laughs> that is so insane because his PB is a 3310 and his world record ended up being 32.55, <laughs> so he carries this 15 seconds forward, which is insane. So insane. That guy can sometimes hit you out of the C dash. I'm glad it didn't happen to him. Fast room there. Everything's going nicely. This room is very straightforward. So does he get? The acid skip. He does. Whew. Sometimes I get scared going into that acid skip. <laughs> oh wait, he messes up Trinomi drop. Oh no. Again, just small tiny time losses. Which is everyone has time losses like these in runs. Especially, like, I assume it's nerves, because normally Trinomi Drop is pretty straightforward. But when you're 15 seconds ahead of your PB, <laughs> Trinomi Drop, nothing is straightforward. Absolutely nothing is. Interesting that he kills Zega. I guess he wanted uh, enough soul to heal up and only have to get two Dream Nails. But it doesn't heal up. So he gets a slow attack right off the bat, not what you want. A quick attack, so how many quick attacks does Umboon do? Does he do another quick attack? He does a slow attack, so that's a three second time loss. And you can't really expect to get perfect Umu RNG, it's just Umu does what he wants. So Pest lowers Umu extremely low, and he walks away before he does that last double. Um, definitely different than what most runners do, but 
it puts Umu in a nicer position in this phase. And that's why... Ooh, Pescott. He's in a bit of trouble, but... Okay, he recovered it. He didn't get the last stream nail right away. That was so scary. <laughs> like when he was crystal dashing to the left. Oh, he gets the nice wall cling storage. Very nice. Uh, when he was crystal dashing to the left, he almost got hit out of his crystal dash as well. But he, he knows the timing. It's just, it's a bit scary to watch. Um, you can see he lost that time. That was to Trinomi drop. Uh, that was to Trinomi drop and Umu RNG. Otherwise, there wasn't, wasn't really any real mistakes in that split. So it's just like, you know, he lost two-thirds of a second to mistakes, and then Umu decided, I'm taking, like, three and a half seconds from you, bud. Sorry. And that's just how Hollow Knight is sometimes. <laughs> uh, but you always have time save in the Harris split, because the Harris split is extremely tough. Uh, when you're ahead, this is where the pressure just goes insanely high because if you get hit at any point it's so painful because you have to get all the way to beast den and finish beast den you have to do three damage tanks in this split so <laughs> if you get hit at all it really sucks you don't want to take damage to qga because having to heal up is just such a huge time loss having to not uh, damage tank the devouts is a really big time loss as well. Uh, teacher's archives, getting out of it was fine. No issues there. Let's see, he probably hits that chili. Yeah, he doesn't go for the ceiling boost. Not a big deal. First try QGA, of course, because if he didn't get first try QGA, then he would not have a 3255. <laughs> He would have like a 3258 or something. So his soul is looking nice. Uh, oh, he goes for an extra hit. Um, it's not. You can hit that guy twice, but it's a bit weird sometimes. I guess he goes for just one hit on this Mantis. Oh, he goes for two. So he got an extra hit of soul that he didn't need. I sometimes do that as well. It's just like. Oh, he got Geo from that Mantis. <laughs> that is kind of sketchy, but I really like it. Instead of going for like some of the husks in City of Tears, he just gets some of that Mantis Geo. That's not bad. It's kind of scary though, because like, what if what if you can't get that Geo? Uh, those guys were in nice positions, so he got a lot of soul from them, and they cooperated. Oh, he, he hits that guy twice. Uh, probably wise to do that, just to play it safe in case he can't get hits later on. Oh, he moves left before going for that menu drop. It's a bit slower, but definitely safer. And that was quite clean. Uh, he didn't st slow down his fall at all. He just uh, went for the dash and he got it. Very nice. Really good split so far. And everyone in chat is absolutely losing their... Uh, I can't swear because YouTube will take away my advertising money. <laughs> oh, that was a bit slow, but you know, <laughs> it is how it is. When you gold QGA, <laughs> you can't expect to get everything perfect. Again, it's just like super minor time losses that don't really matter that much. Everything else is incredibly solid. This run is really crazy. Uh, and he's so far ahead right now, and that, that was also a really good split. He's going into a super tough part of the run, but he has four health. That's the maximum amount of health that you can have. So it's scary because you can still lose so much time, but he's probably not super scared of dying right now. Just scared of losing time. 
So, oh, he he played that like a little bit scared and didn't get the dash uh, quite low enough. Totally understandable. You do not want to start the split getting hit. And oh, that spider was in a good spot, but Pest got a bit scared. Oh, this is a bit sloppy, but totally understandable because he's so far ahead. Uh, that was a bit of a mistake. Saving that grub loses time, and it saves the grub. You don't want to save the grubs. So Beaston didn't go super well, but the fact that he had four health going in really helped him out uh, because his QGA and uh, Queen's Garden split was so nice. So... This is the point in the run where I showed up and I started watching I started spamming chat. Everyone was going insane because, like, the world record is guaranteed at this point unless Hollow Knight is just, like, gives you a 1 in 100 terrible fight, which isn't happening. So crazy being 17 seconds ahead at this point. And that's why this is, like... This is the best run of Hollow Knight ever done so far. So good. Every time loss was minor. Or just... Oh. <laughs> There's another one. Um, but, you know, at this point, Pest is understandably freaking out. <laughs> Otherwise, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Everyone was freaking out. Um, but yeah, Pest has a really nice THK fight, um, so I was confident that he would get a 32 at this point. Everyone probably felt he was most likely going to get the 32 unless Hollow Knight parried him like 10 times. Really, really must be feeling good to be 17 seconds ahead at this point. It's like... You're not fighting for the 32, you're fighting to see how low the 32 can be. But, world first 32, man. Holy crap. <laughs> At the beginning of 2019, when times were like 33 5x, everyone was just memeing about 32, like, as soon as people got 33, people were like, but when's the 32? Just as a joke, because they thought 32 was never going to be possible. Well, lo and behold, it is. I actually remember uh, someone in the community, like in 2018, told me that a realistic end game time for this category was like a mid 32. And I was like, no, it ain't, dude. No one's ever getting that time. <laughs> but it is uh, looking very possible. Uh, he misses a double there, which is unfortunate. But, you know, that's just nerves right there. Oh, two parries. Uh, when you see two parries like that, you are so scared. Oh, and third parry. <laughs> Oh, another berry. <laughs> Best probably feels so scared right now. He just wants Hollow Knight to stop parrying. He almost walked into it. <laughs> oh, another one. But he's getting a lot of dashes as well right now. See, and that first phase was pretty well executed. It's like really minor stuff. And uh, mediocre Hollow Knight RNG. He does another parry. Very sad. See, if Umu cooperated and Hollow Knight cooperate, co cooperated more, <laughs> this could have been a 32-4x. I mean, you can always say that about, oh, he goes, he gets the scream skip. I've already seen that, so I know he gets the scream skip, but anyway, if, if the bosses cooperated a bit more, it could have been a 32-4x. And that's always the case with this game. You can always say, like, it could have been better if the bosses cooperated. But point is, Pest executed extremely well this run. All the mistakes were minor. And towards the end, he started to get a bit nervous, you could tell. 
but any like literally anyone would get nervous at that point. 32 55.85 the best Hollow Knight speedrun ever done. Of any percent NMG. <laughs> Uh, probably the best speedrun of Hollow Knight ever done, period. Well, definitely. I don't think there's any contest. Uh, this beat world record by 12 seconds, and that record stood for, like, six months. And it was after, like, you have to understand the context, which is that we got that 3307. I got that, um... It was at the tail end of a tournament, so everyone was playing a ton, and everyone was optimizing the game, we were competing, we were in practice, we were doing runs, and after all of that, after all of that activity, we mustered up a 3307. That was what we got. And then Pest comes out six months later, and gets a 32.55. 12 seconds faster. <laughs> 12 seconds is so much. Like, I'm saying 12 seconds, and to some, that might not seem like a huge deal. That's an insane amount of time. That's an absurd amount of time for this category, which, like, we've been playing this category for over three years now, uh, and I haven't seen a speedrun like this. It's crazy. Because, like, we have in the past beat the record by a significant amount of time, but not once it got this optimized. Like, this goes into the 32 barrier, and the world record at that point, like, 3307 is already pretty decent. It's not incredible, but it's a pretty decent time. And this got bopped, or that got bopped by 12 seconds. Whew. So, uh, huge shoutouts to my boy Pest, aka Pestilent Box 2, for giving me permission to do this reaction video. <laughs> reaction videos are not my thing, but I thought I might, you know, give my insight and stuff as I watch the video, because I wanted to watch the video anyway, just to see what he does differently so that when I come back into the category, I can copy his strats. And I'm thinking about doing so. <clears throat> so, yeah, do I have anything else to say? I'm not sure, just huge shoutouts. Um, oh, yeah, video is completed. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I think I'm going to just wrap this up. Uh, go check out Pest's uh, Twitch and YouTube. I'm going to be linking them in the description. He doesn't have many subscribers and stuff, so he deserves more because he has the world record in one of the more popular speed games, and people aren't following him, so go check out his stuff. He streams, he posts his PVs to YouTube, you can watch them, okay? Go check that out. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm signing out. Later, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>